What about the, since we're on Hollywood, what about The Matrix? Now that really engaged an awful lot of minds, particularly those in their 20s and 30s. What is your experience with those kinds of potential realities and how do you how do you describe where that came from and what that's leading us to? Well, there are two aspects of the matrix. One is whether or not it's physically possible to have virtual reality indistinguishable from ordinary reality. And second of all, will the machines take over? Okay, so let's talk about them one at a time. Um, our most advanced robots have the collective wisdom of a retarded cockroach. <laughs> Not an ordinary cockroach, a retarded, lobotomized cockroach. So we're not in danger yet. Go ahead. Uh, for my book, Visions, I interviewed 150 of the world's top scientists. These are the directors of all the major scientific laboratories. These are Nobel laureates. I interviewed Rodney Brooks, who is the director of the MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, the number one laboratory in the world. And I asked him, well, how long will it take before our most advanced robots become as intelligent as us? And he said, well, first of all, our most advanced robot is on Mars. It's his godchild in some sense. It's the Mars rover. It's a real automaton. So I asked him, well, how intelligent is your grandchild, the Mars rover? And he said, well, you know, a cockroach, you know, <laughs> a slow cockroach, a slow, a slow learning cockroach, okay? Now, a cockroach, you know, um, on a table, you raise your hand, the cockroach scans your hand, says, danger, 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 runs into the uh, cracks. I know, I used to live in a house with lots of cockroaches. <laughs> However, you know, the Mars rover, if you were to raise your tentacle to Mars rover on Mars, it would scan the tentacle and say, is that a dog? No, <laughs> not a dog. Is that a giraffe? No, not a dog. Six hours later, it would still be wondering, you know, is that a cow? Meanwhile, the alien would have gone whack. <laughs> it takes six hours for our most advanced robots to walk across the room. Six hours for them to scan the room. The robot has to figure out where's up, where's down. Here is a rectangle. Is it a table or is it a square or is it a, is it a pie pl a plate or what is it? Uh, the a robot would scan a cup and it would, it would understand all the triangles and circles and cylinders of a cup perfectly. It would see it better than us, but it would take hours for it to finally say, ah, cup, <laughs> cup. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Robots don't have common sense. Right. They don't know that water is wet. They don't know that mothers are older than their daughters. They don't know that animals do not like pain. They don't know that when you die, you don't come back the next day. They don't know that strings can pull, strings cannot push. Uh, they don't know that, that sticks can push, but cannot pull. Robots don't know that. So they're not poised to take over just yet. Yeah. But let's talk about a more realistic interface with um, technology, which is the interface between human consciousness and, say, nanotechnology in the world of computers. You talk about this a little bit in visions. Well, there is going to be a gradual merger of silicon and carbon in the future. Okay. Um, it's already happening. Uh, people are already living with artificial parts in their body, and uh, we love it because either that or else be paralyzed. Either that or else not have use of your, your arms and legs. So, um, and also, uh, DNA technology is getting to the point where it will eventually interface with silicon. Now, of course, this is far in the future. And I think that society has to democratically, democratically have a consensus as to how far to push this thing, okay? So I think uh, that is going to be one, one direction that we're going to go into. Another direction is pure silicon. Um, Asimov wrote about the three laws of robotics to protect us against dangerous machines. Our most advanced robot has the intelligence of a cockroach. I suspect that in about 20 years, they'll probably be as intelligent as a, a dog or a cat. And perhaps in 30, 40 years, they'll probably be as intelligent as a monkey. At that point, they could get a little dangerous because monkeys do have their own agenda. They have their own plans, their own goals, okay? Dogs and cats may not, but monkeys probably do. At that point, I think we have plenty of time to put a chip in their brain to shut them off <laughs> if they have any murderous thoughts. So I think there's plenty of time. We don't have to say, you know, one day a robot will wake up and will be conscious and take over the world. It'll be decades of experimentation with cat-like, dog-like robots leading to monkey-like robots before we have to worry about them.